Hey, this is Norm Haney from 1340 WBGN. I am the host of The Sports Guys, which airs weekdays from 4 to 6 p.m. right here on 1340 AM, and we stream live on 1340 WBGN.com. This is Beyond the Norm for BuyLocalBG.com. First up, I want to say congratulations to the Bowling Green Purples. They picked up a huge win over Louisville St. Xavier this past week, just solidifying the fact that they're the number one team in Class 5A. Also, big congratulations to Warren Central. They defeated Fort Campbell in convincing fashion at home last week as well, and that's kind of setting the stage for the big matchup later this year between the Purples and the Dragons. Uh, don't forget, you can tune in to the WBGN Game of the Week this Friday night. Hey, we're going to be live from Ray Stadium in Russellville as the Panthers play host to South Warren. The Spartans still in search of its first ever varsity win. So make sure you tune in for that. Big thing going on here in Bowling Green this week. The Bowling Green Hot Rods are in their first ever playoff series. They'll play at home Friday at the Bowling Green Ballpark against the Fort Wayne Tin Caps. The game was actually, uh, every, the series pushed back a day because of uh, the rain out on Wednesday night. So uh, it's the best of a three game series. There's a chance the Hot Rods could play again on Saturday at the Bowling Green Ballpark. And you can listen to those games here on 1340 The Ticket. Do want to make a small note that Friday, because of our high school football game of the week, the Hot Rods will be airing on Willie 94.1 FM, but we will stream the game live on 1340WBGN.com and uh, would highly encourage anybody out there to go and support the Hot Rods and let's pack out the Bowling Green Ballpark and help this team win the Midwest League Championship. It would be great in just its third year see the Hot Rods uh, bring home a title. Also going on this weekend, Saturday over at Halchins Industries LT Smith Stadium, you've got the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers playing host to the Naval Academy. Academy. The midshipmen come into town once again with one of the top ranked rushing attacks in all of college football. Huge challenge for first year defensive coordinator Lance Gidry in the Hilltopper defense. They looked great last week in a 14-3 loss to Kentucky. Uh, different type of challenge this week. When you play an option team, basically it's, it's being disciplined and sticking to the fundamentals. Um, it's not that um, difficult, or I guess it's not as easy as it sounds, um, but it's pretty simple in stopping the option. If everybody does their job, you can shut down the option, but it's very confusing and the option teams kind of wear away at people. Uh, the Hilltoppers still in search of its first ever Division 1A, or as they call it now, the College Bowl subdivision, win at home. They picked up two wins last year, which uh, were the, the program's first D1A wins, but uh, they haven't won at uh, Houston Industry Smith Stadium, so hopefully the Hilltopper fans will be out there. They'll have them red towels waving, and uh, the Hilltoppers can deliver them a big victory. There's a lot to build off in the Kentucky game. Um, I know it's disappointing. People drove all the way down to Nashville and, and WKU came up a little bit short. The defense played absolutely lights out, uh, so that's encouraging. But the offense certainly has something to prove. Uh, quarterback Kwan Jakes uh, missed a couple touchdown passes last week that maybe could have turned the tide in, in the game against UK. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure on him to come out and play well and uh, for the offense to play well. They need to put up some points, give that defense a little bit of support. On the flip side, Kentucky does pick up the win. They're back home in Lexington taking on Central Michigan Saturday at Commonwealth Stadium. They have a lot to prove as well. I mean, the Kentucky offense um, couldn't figure out WKU's defense, and a lot of the Wildcat faithful have been extremely critical of Joker Phillips, his play calling, his players, his receivers. They had a bunch of drops. So the pressure's really on the Wildcat offense and uh, to, to come out and, and play well. Morgan Newton, the quarterback, had three interceptions. Um, you know, this is the first year where he's the guy. You know, he's the full-time starter, and it's his team. Uh, he certainly needs to perform better against Central Michigan. And, of course, the following week's the Governor's Cup. It'll be in Lexington as Louisville comes to town. And uh, if you're a Kentucky fan, you'd certainly like to see the Wildcats play a little bit better uh, to maybe give you a little more hope coming into that Louisville game. Louisville, back at home. They're taking on preseason Sunbelt favorite Florida International. Uh, don't know how important you think the odds are, but 
The guys in Las Vegas see the Cardinals as just a four-point favorite over a Sunbelt team. So um, this isn't a gimme. This is definitely not a gimme. Florida International, very impressive in its opening win at North Texas. They come in this season with a lot of expectations. I think they're going into Louisville not expecting to compete. Those guys think they can win, and they're capable of winning. Um, Louisville only beat Murray State 21-9. Murray State is a 1-AA opponent. Had some opportunities late in that game to, uh, to make it a little more interesting than it actually was. So uh, Louisville, Kentucky, both at home. Tremendous amount of pressure to look better than they did in Week 1. And finally, it's the NFL season. Starts Thursday night with Green Bay hosting the New Orleans Saints, the defending champs. Uh, taking on the team that won it the year before. So that's a great matchup to kick off the season. Uh, but I think a lot of people here locally uh, focused on the Tennessee Titans as they begin the Matt Hasselbeck era. Uh, Chris Johnson ended his holdout, so he's been in camp for uh, a little over a week. No preseason carries. He's the franchise. You have to wonder how much... Um, how much he'll play in week one. Jacksonville just released its starting quarterback in David Garrard. They're moving now to Luke McNown. So there's a lot of uncertainty with the Jacksonville team. So uh, Tennessee has an opportunity to go on the road in the division, pick up a win, and build a little bit of momentum. I think there's a lot of uncertainty this year in the AFC South, especially now that uh, Peyton Manning could be out for quite a while. Reports are he could have another neck surgery as early as this week, and that could make him miss uh, most, if not all, this season. So I think that leaves the AFC South a little up in the air. A lot of people didn't think the Tennessee Titans would be in the big picture this year, but maybe they will. Maybe Matt Hasselbeck will be a little better than we thought. Maybe Kenny Britt can put his off-season troubles behind him. Chris Johnson gets back into the flow. Hey, Titans might be better than we think. So they start this Sunday on the 10th anniversary of 9-11. I have to imagine all the NFL teams will be paying uh, tribute to those who lost their lives and the men and women of the armed forces who are serving overseas um, all in the aftermath of 9-11. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years, but uh, it is the 10-year anniversary. And finally, last but not least, want to encourage everybody out there to come to Overtime Sports Bar and Grill this Monday night and every Monday night. Join me and the sports guys. We'll be doing our live show out there from 4 to 6 p.m. We'll also be hanging out there, giving away cool prizes and uh, great food, great drink specials, tons of televisions. You can watch the big game. Uh, of course, it's week one, so there'll be a doubleheader on Monday Night Football. You open up in Miami as New England travels to take on the Dolphins, and then in the nightcap, the Oakland Raiders will be at the Denver Broncos. I'm Norm Haney. This is Beyond the Norm, as we're now calling it on shop. Apologize for buylocalbg.com. I appreciate your time, and be sure to tune into the Sports Guys again Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. on 1340 The Ticket. Coming, coming to you loud and clear. Like the range, everyone's attention.